so coming to the most uh, my favorite part of the presentation that is the functional foods so what are the foods which we can advise or we can start taking right now like uh, even before developing any kind of uh, cardiac conditions as a duty to be healthy and fit we can start taking these kind of functional foods in our diets which will really help us in keeping our heart healthy so vitamin c and e these are very very important because they have very good antioxidant properties so a lot of citrus fruits and lot of seeds and nuts have to be encouraged but be very careful when you are uh, advising for the nuts because the nuts are again high on fat high on calories and if the patient is already struggling with some kind of obesity complications so in that cases uh, nuts have to be given in very much strict moderation okay so vitamin c and vitamin e have to be given in sufficient amounts then coming to carotenoids and beta carotene so these are also very effective antioxidants so the more colorful your vegetables the more colored pigments into your diet the more better is your heart next comes the soya protein so soya proteins also have to be given because they are a very good source of protein especially for people who have lactose intolerance or some kind of intolerance with the dairy products they can always prefer taking the soya proteins like recently uh, the national dairy research institute they have uh, in karnal they have started making a soya protein butter so because uh, for uh, for cardiac patients because uh, cardiac patients are being uh, limited on the fatty intake and what happens is the taste palate is mainly on the fat content and because they are taking more of bland foods and all they should not be uh, under eating right so to enhance the taste of these kind of foods what they have done is they have taken the soya protein and made a butter out of, out of it which is good in taste which will enhance the foods which are being taken by the heart patients similarly avocado also has a very good amount of fat healthy fat that also can be consumed then uh, of course fibers have to be always monitored strictly because uh, you never can't afford the heart patient to have any kind of uh, constipation issues then coming to selenium rich foods so lot of grains you can have lot of vegetables even rice for that matter has some amount of selenium so selenium amounts are very less but uh, till now nobody has used any kind of selenium uh, pure selenium supplements you can have a mixture like they give folic acid selenium or they give vitamin uh, b complex and selenium so those kind of supplements can be given to the patient then coming to uh, fruits of course the uh, uh, colored fruits are better so fruits like berries fruits like uh, papaya pineapple these can be taken but again for uh, uh, these uh, foods the tolerance of the person has to be calculated the kind of digestive capacity as well as uh, the kind of uh, caloric content their bmi has to be uh, strictly seen and only then just a minute only then the fruits have to be taken in uh, larger quantities otherwise in moderation all the fruits are advisable then coming to nuts nuts out of all the nuts actually almond is the best one it has been proven to have a lot of polyunsaturated fat as well as good fat which will really help the patient for uh, removing oxidative stress from the cardiac issues and then uh, different kinds of spices and herbs especially garlic so you must have seen many of the people endorsing to take one uh, uh, clove of garlic to reduce the cholesterol so that it has really proven to be very effective it has been researched and documented that one clove of garlic early in the morning definitely helps in uh, bringing down the level of cholesterol so it actually makes the cholesterol utilizable okay i'll see the chat at the last sorry let me go back just a minute hmm. and then coming to the blended oils so different varieties of oils are always advised to be blended and uh, in the market there are different types of blended oils also into the system like you can have a uh, rice bran oil and sunflower oil safflower oil you can have you can have groundnut oil 
but again you have to be a little careful because some people have a tendency of indigestion and allergies allergic to groundnut oil so you have to be very careful when you're advising your patient whether the patient is uh, has the habit of taking or has he taken earlier this kind of uh, oils so blended oils are always a must so never go for only one kind of oil all your life keep changing either you can have a rotation of oil or you can have a blend of oils then good fats like polyunsaturated fatty acids especially in this blended oils you can get you can get it in the nuts then fish and fish oil extracts sometimes when the cases are very severe and the patient is not taking any kind of fish even fish oil capsules are advised uh, just to help them in their condition then low fat yogurt and milk products also especially to improve your gut microbiome and to improve your probiotic content so that there is uh, no complication of any kind of constipation and things like that. So these are the main functional foods. So I did not uh, tell cover whole grains, but they are also an integral part. As you can see in the figure, the integral part of your functional foods, that is the millets, different types of millets need to replace the wheat and rice, which we all have got uh, used to. We all got used to this kind of uh, rice. So that has to be uh, replaced with variety of millets available. So coming to the dietary guidelines. So what kind of dietary guidelines you are going to give to the patient? So in that case, a brief period of undernutrition is advised, especially if your patient had some kind of myocardial infarction or heart attack. Then immediately the next day or the, that particular night, the subsequent night, a brief period of undernutrition is given. That is 800 to 1200 kilocalories only is given. Why? Because the metabolism of heart is switching at this stage from Utilizing free fatty acids as primary source of energy, now it is taking the oxidation of glucose. So during this particular uh, period, the patient has to have very light food because to digest the food also a lot of energy will be expended and then the heart will suffer. So initially for 2-3 days, the patient is kept under, under nutrition, very less amount of food is given just to sustain him and then slowly soft food is given and easily digestible food is given and then uh, all the normal routine diet plans and all those are advised. So dietary guidelines always you have to check as per the age, gender, metabolic status, weight, family history. So what I mean by metabolic status is see each patient has a different story. So from my experience into nutrition field, I can say that uh, every time a patient approaches, there is a new thing to discover. So the formula or the kind of uh, advice which I had given earlier to some patient with similar age and everything, age, gender and all those things still doesn't work because the metabolism of each individual is changing. So sometimes it happens that people, some people very quickly, you must have noticed yourself, some people very quickly lose the weight. Some people take very long time to lose, but then they maintain it all right. So it all depends on the kind of metabolic status of the person. The weight, of course, the BMI is important. So if it's a normal person, you can uh, allow them to take the normal uh, caloric diet just two, three days after the attack. But in case of obese person, you have to be still more careful. Then coming to family history, you have to always be very careful with people who have hypercholesterolemia, hyperlipidemia, cardiac conditions running in the family. Then uh, smoking, alcohol habits, this also have to be taken into account. So what happens, you are doing everything right and suddenly the person drinks one, uh, one weekend and then all his sugars will go for a toss, all his calories will go for a toss. So you have to be very careful and you have to counsel the patient for uh, minimizing, moderating, and then slowly reducing the alcohol consumption. So the three important things which you can always keep in mind when you are suggesting or giving any dietary advice to the patient. First thing is low fat. Of course, the kind of fat which will be given should be uh, polyunsaturated fat or monounsaturated fat. Then low carb, low carb as in I say, don't give them any kind of simple sugars. 
or sugars with uh, high gi processed foods bakery foods all those things and give them a normal protein diet sometimes what happens is people uh, tend to give too much of protein that is also not advisable for cardiac patients who have just recovered from mi who are immediately after mi you are not supposed to give them too much of protein because as i told you again it will the uh, load on the heart will increase because a lot of digestive energy will be expended for the protein digestion protein metabolism then in case of hypertension low sodium diet is recommended and then uh, if the person is having uh, obesity issues bmi is more then definitely the calorie content has to be strictly monitored for these people and uh, always give them diet which is rich in antioxidants flavonoids fiber vitamins and minerals lot of colorful vegetables and fruits have to be given so that the antioxidant levels are always in a check so always advisable to go for more of antioxidants because that really protects our heart then the third thing is saturated and trans fat has to be completely avoided so fats rich in omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids need to be taken so especially the fish fish extracts fish oil these need to be taken so those are the dietary guidelines for depending upon the age you have to again keep changing that so it's not like a, you have a fixed diet plan for each patient it's different each patient it's a new story so then just a minute then you can look at the cholesterol where is my cursor just a minute just a minute. then you can look at the cholesterol levels so this i think uh, most of you may be aware so the heart healthy cholesterol total cholesterol should always be under 200 now again you have variations for males and females and then uh, ldl should uh, ldl cholesterol that is low density lipoprotein should be under 100 and hdl should always be 60 or higher so in case of uh, males it should be 40 or higher and in case of females it should be 45 to 60 something okay so that is the uh, healthy level of cholesterol then the borderline you can say means the person is at risk that is 200 to 239 total cholesterol then 100 to 159 is the ldl cholesterol and uh, 40 to 59 is the hdl at risk for the male and 50 to 59 is the hdl at risk for the female then coming to the dangerous or you can say a caution period that is the total cholesterol if it's becoming higher than 240 and uh, ldl that is low density lipoprotein is becoming higher than 160 and hdl if it is becoming lower than 40 for males and lower than 50 for females then you can definitely say that it's a matter of concern so coming to the food tips food tips for the just a minute food tips for the cvd patients so i think i got the question here okay i'll look at it later so food tips to be included as i told you whole grains so uh, you can have a comparative thing about what are the foods which you need to restrict or moderate and what are the things you need to avoid completely or you can say you are totally uh, removing that from the meal plan so foods to be included as i told you whole grains the millets the oats all this unpolished rice all those can be taken then polyunsaturated fatty acids can be taken then uh, a variety of millets nowadays you have huge amount of millet recipes available in all over the media you can choose the kind of millets and then but one thing you have to remember millets are very good for health no doubt about it no doubt about it but that doesn't mean that you go on the board and go on consuming large quantities always be very careful about the quantities of millets also because 
they are not easy to digest, especially for senior citizen patients you are taking, their digestive capacity is very less. So in those cases, it becomes very difficult for them to digest a high amount of millet. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, there was some network issue. Power cut was there. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll continue no, with present. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I hope you are able to see my slides. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I was talking about the food tips for the CVD patient. So I was uh, telling. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you please uh, put it on slideshow mode now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'll do that. Just a minute. This bar I have to move. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So I was telling you about millets. Uh, the amount of millets to be taken, especially for senior citizens or people who have some kind of digestive issues, it is always advisable to give them in uh, moderate quantities. Then coming to the dairy products, always go for low-fat products because that uh, brings us uh, on a safer side to avoid the saturated fats which are there in many of the dairy products. Especially nowadays you have a lot of varieties of cheese and paneer and all those things. So those have to be really uh, monitored unless and until it is coming from a low-fat source in some moderation you can give. But otherwise, it's always advisable not to go for it. Then uh, all the fibrous Green leafy vegetables, carrots and all the colored veggies have to be preferred and lot of uh, spices. So when I say spices, I mean spices without oil content. Please keep this in mind. Nowadays, people always they use the word spicy in a very generalized way. They say it is a spicy curry. But when you look at the curry, it has huge amount of oil in it. So without oil also, with minimum oil also, you can make the food tasty by adding all the black pepper and cumin and jeera and all different types of spices. So spices are good for health, but when you combine them with huge amount of oil, it really becomes a health. So be very careful about the quantity of oil you are taking when you are adding the spices and of course uh, prefer to take garlic. Fenugreek seeds also, in a recent study by National Institute of Nutrition, they have endorsed and they have said that fenugreek seeds really help both in the cases of diabetic patients as well as in case of cardiac issues. So it is always advisable for them. Never go for any kind of uh, Indian spices supplements. Keep this also in mind. That nowadays you have a lot of capsules and all they give about Moringa power and fenugreek power. and See, the kind of food which we are taking, it has to be consumed along with the other biomolecules in a digestible manner. Then only it assimilates very well. Otherwise, you take it like a capsule, like unless and until it is unavoidable. Maybe for some patient who has some aspiration issues and he's on a rice tube, those cases are different. But when you are able to chew and when you are able to have food, always advise the patients to use these foods in preparation of their meals instead of asking them to take the supplements or the oil uh, capsules and things like that then of course fruits are a major part so fruits and salads and uh, ask them to go for roasted or baked snacks like for example if they have some craving something salty they want to eat they can have a little bit of baked corn they can have or they can have a roasted papad something like that but again if it is a hypertensive patient then uh, you need to be careful about the salt content so but ask them to choose for or uh, train them in such a way that they start liking the roasted stuff. They start liking the baked items. Then coming to foods to be restricted, especially the unrefined cereals, the processed foods, okay, polished rice. Then olive oil also. Olive oil is good for health, no doubt, but again, the amount to be consumed has to be very carefully monitored. Then rice and wheat products, uh, very less, very, very less. Uh, they need to cut down on rice, especially in South India. It's very rampant. So, especially in the after sunset, it is always advisable not to have rice. So, not only for cardiac, for anybody. It is advisable that you cons don't consume rice in the nights. 
you can consume them in the lunch in that also if you can prefer take brown rice or something which is unpolished rice okay you have that uh, kerala black rice red rice lot of variety of rice is there throughout india you can keep experimenting try different types of rice then uh, dairy products paneer have to be restricted curries with oily gravy as i already told you then salt so as i told you be very careful with the kind of namkeens and all you take uh, they may be baked no doubt but they may have high salt content again so be very careful with that nuts and oil seeds have to be strictly monitored like uh, the nuts are good for health but again they may have some calorie and more of fatty content coconut uh, there is lot of uh, confusion about coconut coconut uh, in some cases, they say that because it contains short chain uh, fatty acids and medium chain fatty acids, it is good for the heart, but only in moderation. If we take extreme of coconut, again, there are cases where it has led to atherosclerosis. So there is a little bit of uh, ambiguous thing when you talk about coconut. Then uh, always ask the persons not to go for raw oily paratas, puris. They can instead have something with the millets. So nowadays you have a lot of millet paratas and jawar rotis and those things. And if they want to go for any kind of non-veg diet, they can go for a lean meat uh, chicken uh, once in a while, once in a week like that, they can go for it. But again, uh, they should be careful about the gravy which is used there. Then coming to the foods to be avoided, saturated fats, complete no. So as I told you, butter, ghee, all these have to be. Now again, ghee is also an ambiguous element here. Ghee sometimes, uh, as per Ayurveda, they say that ghee has a lot of uh, short chain and medium chain fatty acids, which is very good for the heart. But again, uh, we need to be very careful. Once we advise the patient it's good, they start taking in large quantities. That is the risk here. So be very careful about the quantities you are mentioning and ask them to take in moderation, very less quantity, so that there is no, not uh, overconsumption. Then butter, cheese, all these things have to be avoided. Trans fats, okay, stored food items, potato chips, this and that. Processed foods, the maida foods, then vanaspati oil, then uh, mutton, because mutton will need a lot of oil for uh, cooking and consumption. So it is uh, advisable not to go for it. Ask the patient to go for any lean meat or go for fish instead. But again, be very careful about the amount of oil which is going into cooking it. Then pickles, cheese, creams, bakery items, sweets, high simple sugary uh, food items, fried snacks and high salt foods. All of this has to be avoided. <laughs>